Next up, women make up just around a quarter of all workers in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. For women of color, not surprisingly, the numbers are even more depressing. And for those who do break in, there is no shortage of reminders they're not very welcome in the boys' club of American science. I remember when I was in my office once, sitting at my desk, at my computer. Like, I've got, you know, papers spread out. If someone comes into my office and for some reason assumes I'm the janitor. I mean, I've been in meetings where you've made a suggestion or said, well, what about this? And it was like you never spoke at all. But if a white guy says it, you're like, and now it'll magically be heard. Everybody watch this. From microaggressions to outright abuse, a terrific new documentary dives deep into the racism and misogyny in the world of science and the efforts to hold the offenders accountable. It's called Picture a Scientist. I'm joined now by one of its directors, Sharon Shattuck, and a scientist featured in the film, Nancy Hopkins, a molecular biologist and professor emerita at MIT. It's great to meet you both. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. you know, Sharon, this is both one of the most depressing and inspirational films all in <laughs> one. I gave just a couple of numbers. How bad is it actually for women in STEM? I mean, I, I, well, I think Nancy might be able to speak. Uh, she knows more about the numbers than I do. But but yeah, like we we made this film because it's just an issue that's obvious. <laughs> you know, as filmmakers, we, we always try to feature a diversity of people in our films. And it, it has always been harder to find women in science than, than men. Can you describe, Sharon, your, the iceberg imagery in your film to people, mm -hmm. please? Yeah, so that's something. So we have this, uh, it's an analogy of this iceberg that was featured in this um, National Academy of Sciences report on gender harassment. And the idea is that like 10%, you know, the, the visible section of the iceberg, um, that's like the, the really overt kind of uh, aggressions like harassment, um, assault, you know, Harvey Weinstein type mm -hmm. things. But then yeah. there's another 90% under the surface of just microaggressions, you know, feeling like you, you're left off an email, like you weren't invited to, you know, collaborate with people, even though you're the clear expert on the subject. Um, and those things can have just as damaging of an effect mm -hmm. on a woman's decision to stay in science. So that's what really we wanted to focus on. You know, Nancy, you go from, uh, I use the word just, advice, just wanting to be a scientist and do your work to a self-described radical activist. And the tipping point is when you surreptitiously, late at night, measure the lab space of some of your male counterparts at MIT. Could you describe what that was all about, please? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I do want to say one thing. You sounded a little bit negative. Remember, this movie is about why there are still so few women in science. But um, mm -hmm. for those of us who did go into it and did stay, I do want to say that it is the greatest privilege that you can ever have is to be a scientist. So I do want to make that point clear. Uh, I but, love that you um, said it. Yes. But. Yeah. But I was a person who thought there was no problem for women in science when I started, which was nearly 50 years ago. I thought if you could get a job, you were made. That was it. Uh, problem solved. Um, but over time, I came to see that I had been wrong and that there were these um, peculiar things that happened uh, to women that were not happening to men that made the job much harder. And um, in one case, women had small labs in my field, and it was just the way it was. But at some point, I needed more space. And so I said, I needed more space. And I was told, oh, well, you have the same space as everybody else. I said, no, I don't. And there was a debate going on. Finally, I took a tape measure and went around the building and measured all the labs, <laughs> the men and the women, and tallied them up in order to make my point. You know, But it was sort of ridiculous. I was a tenured professor. I was embarrassed to be seen doing this. I was creeping around the night. But this was quite a long time ago. So things have changed since then, and um, very much so. Well, in part because of the MIT report that you and so many of your women colleagues ended up signing. Do you resent, Nancy, all the time you had to spend fighting for equity and all the time it took away from what your true love is, you said, as you said, science? If I'd had a choice, of course, I would have preferred to just be a scientist. 
But mm -hmm. I think women of my generation were so lucky to get a job. And we were pioneers who came in. Nobody realized there were all these issues that were waiting behind the door for the women who came through that door. So I, once I realized what was going on, uh, working with my other female colleagues and with MIT to address the problem was you know, fascinating and gratifying. You know, my second choice, well, that would have been my second choice, I guess. The first choice would have been just be a scientist. You know, Sharon, I was wondering when I was watching the film last night what you meant with a particular seg segment. Uh, one of the three women you follow, Jane Willenbring, uh, who was uh, uh, verbally and physically assaulted by a famous BU professor when she was on a mission in Antarctica, uh, uh, finally decides years later to bring a Title IX complaint against him. Ultimately, he's fired as a result of it. And you have a reuniting of a scene where she meets with a man who was on that field trip and had said nothing. And when I watched that scene, while she was kind to him, I kept saying to myself, could any human being less understand the dynamics between men and women trying to do their jobs than this adult? Uh, was that what you were trying to show or were you trying to show a more, no, I'm serious. I'm, Go ahead. Honestly, like so, so I I really like that scene. Um, that's um, Adam Lewis. He's a, also a yes, geologist, and and he's he's a really good friend of Jane's. First of all, like they were they were in the field together. They were both um, graduate students right. at the time, and so she's told me, you know, she was like, yeah, I didn't I didn't expect him to be able to do anything really in that situation. Although I really wish he would have said at the time, hey, this really sucks. You know, <laughs> this is really hard. Uh -huh. um, and and he didn't do that. And I think the reason that that scene is so powerful um, and important to include in the film is that I think we're, we're all Adam in certain situations. I've definitely been in that situation where I didn't really re read what was happening and I wish I would have done something different. Um, and I think it's just it's it's important to realize that you can still be an ally even if you don't get everything right. Boy, you're a much kinder person than I am. But it's not just men. You have uh, Mazarin uh, Banaji, I want to get her name right, who's a social psychologist at uh, Harvard. And she has just administered this implied association test to her students, after which she has this incredibly candid admission she shares with you. Here she is. The feeling you get as you take this test is one of utter despair. <laughs> I ought to be able to associate female and male equally with science. I am, after all, a woman in science. This should not be so hard for me to do. To discover that I cannot do that, I think is profound. Nancy, what was your reaction to that? My reaction was it's so baked in that we have decades of work to do. What was yours? Yes, I think it I think it really took me 20 years to understand that this unconscious bias was the problem. And I had this aha moment, you know, it was like the light bulb going off. It probably was the most important discovery I ever made, actually. And I think it is profound. I agree with Mazar and I think what the psychologists discovered about why all this happens is hugely important. Yeah. You know, I want to ask both of you before we leave, starting with you, Nancy. In this film, Rachel Burks is outspoken in so many venues. We heard from her a couple of minutes ago. Jane Willenbring courageously brings this Title IX complaint and ultimately brings down a celebrated uh, uh, professor at BU. And, of course, you and your uh, women colleagues at MIT with the MIT report. How much has changed as a result of the activism of you and so many in your field, Nancy? Um, I, I think there's so much. I mean, I think that's, I hope that comes across in the movie that while we, there are still issues, it's so changed. And I'm very excited right now. I think these young people like Jane and Rachelle, they're really changing. We had a major change 20 years ago and now there's another one going on right now. And I think it's for women, for people of color. And I'm, I think it's tremendously exciting. Yeah. As an outsider looking in, as the filmmaker, do you share Nancy's optimism, Sharon? I do. Yeah, actually, um, I, it was. I found the whole process of making the film. It was depressing at times, but also I was really uplifted just seeing the way people have solved this problem. 
um, the way Nancy and her colleagues came together and yeah. created change. And it's just, it really gave me this hope of like, oh, I'm not alone. Like when I have these little issues, because this isn't just a women in science issue, this is an everybody issue. <laughs> um, yes, it it's, is. it's just, it's nice to feel like you're not alone, you know? You know, Nancy, I want to end this by commenting on the first thing you said to me. One thing that shines through throughout this whole film, despite the pain that you and so many other women in the field had to suffer through totally unjustifiably, is not only your willingness to fight back, but also your unbelievable love of science. And all three of the women who are profiled and in all the other women in the film. This is coming from somebody who got a D in every science course I ever took, but it shines through in every second of the film. So I'm really glad you said it. And I urge everybody to watch this. It's brilliant filmmaking and great activism. And Nancy and Sharon, congratulations to you and all your colleagues. Thank you, Thank you so much.